Hey, good morning, everybody. Okay, well, we're back. Well, it is Monday morning. We did not, we did not finish our uh, our CNC engraved kitchen tabletop over the weekend. This is what happened. Okay, I told you uh, last week that we ended up doing our rings, and then over the weekend we were going to do the engravings, which we did. We did the bulk of them. I did the cabin and the upper right corner of the engraving on Saturday, it milled out in about five hours, and this is why. Now, in VCarve Pro anyways, I can't speak for, for all the software out there, but under the VCarve uh, toolpath function, you have the ability to put in a flat area clearance tool. You could run, say, uh, on some of the bigger jobs, you, you put an end mill in and you'd hog out, out the cabin was really only big enough in that part of the scene for an eighth inch end mill. I don't have any. I've got a, I've got some on order, uh, but I do not currently have any in house. I've got to, I've got to grab some. This side wasn't too bad with the cabin. We, we ran it out with a 60 degree V bit. Like I said, it took about five hours. I was running this machine at about 200 IPM with the appropriate uh, RPM on the router. This one over here, however, which is the big ledge scene on the left hand side of the kitchen table, there's a big area where my hand is. That could have been hogged out with a quarter inch end mill. I always have plenty of those kicking around. However, it was Sunday, I was in a rush, I had a bunch of other things going on up here between here and my home, and I ended up dropping in just a 60 degree V-bit. I let the V-bit perform the whole operation. It was literally six, six and a half hours. I could have cut out a couple hours of that by paying a little bit closer of attention, putting a flat area clearance tool in here. So that was that was completely on me. Uh, but when you get rushing, I didn't damage anything. I just ended up running the machine longer than was necessary because I forgot to put in uh, a flat area clearance tool prior to going around it with that 60 degree V-bit. Now, this morning we are running out the last of the engraving. <coughs> Excuse me, now my 60 degree V-bit is taking a pretty good wallop in over uh, the last couple days, and it was an old one. So, for the water effect, what I like using is I like using the 8th inch ball nose. The water effect is going to be going with the grain of the wood. It's going to come out really, really nice, alright? so. I'm going to drop that right now, let it run. We're going to hop over, we're going to get started on the carriage or the base of this thing. We told you, we'll give you markups, step by step, how we do everything. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention, you know, this morning because I technically probably could have run this out over the weekend, but I wasn't thinking and I got ahead of myself and, and then it ended up costing me a couple of extra hours on the table yesterday, more so than it should have. But I sometimes get ahead of myself, I apologize. This is one of them. You can certainly use, uh, on the cabin scene, you could use a, an eighth inch end mill for your flat area clearance tool, and then over here, you could use a quarter of an inch easy for this particular design, okay? All right, everybody, stay tuned, we'll be back. We're gonna drop the, uh, the ball nose right now. We're gonna get the water effect and the moose in, and then we're gonna get ready to cut this out, okay? All right, you hang on, we'll be right back. Our ball nose ran out beautifully. Our water looks really, really good. We even ran the moose out with the ball nose, only because I had really burned out that 60 degree V bit and I wasn't gonna use it on my moose. So the moose, the water came out really nice. The rest of it looks really good, but like I told you, I, I loused up and I forgot to use the flat area clearance tool. Uh, I didn't have any eighth inch end mills for the cabin, and I completely spaced it on the quarter inch end mill because there's all sorts of nooks and crannies over here that that quarter inch could have gone in and unfortunately a 60 degree V-bit ran the whole thing out probably creating a couple extra hours of unnecessary milling time but I was doing other things while it was going so all's well that ends well. Now we cut this out we used quarter inch end mill now I told you whenever uh, I do an edge, I put a little bevel in. I, I use a, uh, my 90 degree V-bed, I put like a 45 degree chamfer around my edge. That's just what I like. Now, the one thing you got to remember is when you get ready to do your cutout in VCarve Pro, to make sure that you 
do the offset because if not, you're going to click on the outside uh, path to cut. You want to cut on the outside of the path, but if you don't do the offset, you'll cut that bevel or, I don't know, maybe you put a nice decorative edge in yours. You'll cut that right out. So whatever your depth is, I went 187 thousandths, I went 3 16 deep, so I've got a beautiful chamfer all the way around, but when it comes time to cut out, you also need to remember to offset that bit, 187 thousandths, because if not, it will cut your edge off. All right. Well, that is pretty much it. This thing is screwed down to the table. I am going to leave it here for tonight, maybe the next day or two. Uh, we don't have anything on the books. I do have stuff coming in that we'll be sharing with you. But for the next couple days, this can sit right here out of sight, out of mind. We are going to be doing uh, the lower half of the table. I was working on it a little bit today. Uh, I'm going to cut a separate video for that. I will add it on to this Sunday's evening blog, uh, to the Sunday evening blog. We'll do the add-on, and when the video is all done and edited for building the, the base out of our, uh, our log rail stock, I'll release it, give everybody a shout out, and let you know. So for tonight, our top is done to our kitchen table. It looks really nice. I'll go over it with my little, my little wire brush here. You know, I'll get rid of some of my loose, fibrous stuff, you know, and then I can always just hit it with a little, little air, blow off any of the, the nasties. But that's pretty much it. This is done. And uh, we also had mentioned, we're going to show you how to make tenions without a tenion tool. It can be a pain in the butt. I know some people are probably scratching their head going, yeah, right. Uh, I've done them before. I've used a spade bit, I've used a hole saw, uh, a hand saw, and a chisel. They are timely, they are lengthy, but they can be done, okay? So stay tuned, coming up in our, uh, our video, we'll have that. I'll give you all the markups, basically everything that we've done uh, to create this table, I will give to you. I hope that this will, uh, hey, maybe this will open up some type of a market. For you ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that uh, I have no intention to build a kitchen kitchen tables for a living. But uh, hey, if it's something that catches your fancy and this video helps you, hey, run with the ball. Take this engraving if your machine's big enough. You know, I told you guys, you ladies and gentlemen, I don't I don't care. Take this stuff, make some money with it if you can. I love what I do and I enjoy sharing it with with every one of you. Okay, so for the end of the day, I will say thank you. Uh, I hope all of you had a great weekend with you and yours, as always. Hope you got out and you had some better weather than we did. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it. Stay tuned this week. We'll have, the, uh, we'll have the carriage coming up, the underside assembly with all the markups and all that. Uh, again, thank you for your support, as always, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. And stay tuned. We've got more to come, okay? All right, everybody. We'll see you later this week for the remainder of the uh, tutorial here. And coming up this Sunday for our Sunday evening blog, we're gonna start the finishing procedures on this, all right? All right, everyone. Stay tuned, there's more to come as always. And again, it wouldn't be possible without all of you. All right, everyone. Take care, get home safe to you and yours, and have a great week. All right, everybody, bye-bye.